Well, good morning. Yes, it is Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, and I am Kenny Polkara, your host of the party, and here are the things that you need to know about what's going on in the market today. Well, it's up, up, and away, right? The Momo guys are putting it in high gear. Apple is up 30% since Uncle Warren sold half his position, and NVIDIA is up 40% in the last two weeks. Remember, earnings are out on the 28th of August. Oil is down 3% yesterday, gold is up, and bonds were flat. JoJo says goodbye at the DNC convention last night. And what do we have in did it tonight? We're gonna to have the chicken thighs. We'll get to that in a moment. So it feels very familiar, right? Stocks just keep going up and up and then up again. The Momo guys, the momentum guys, are really driving the bus down. This is where the buyers become anxious to get back in, causing the sellers to say, really? You really want to come back in? Well, come and get them as they keep raising their offers, forcing the buyers to pay up and up. But notice, this action creates excitement in the market, it doesn't create panic like it does on the way down. Everyone is happy. Everyone is talking about how NVIDIA gained another 4.5% yesterday, now taking it up 40% since the lows of August 5th when it traded at 90 bucks, leaving the impression that they didn't panic two weeks ago when the bottom was uh, about to fall out or appearing to fall out, right? When the sellers became anxious, hitting bids after bids as the temperature rose, um, trying to convince you that the AI story was over. Well, remember how that news over the weekend that Uncle Warren sold half his Apple position uh, caused so many people to panic and ask, well, what does he know? And if he's selling Apple, then I should get out as well. Well, how'd that work out in case you sold it? Apple is up 30% since Monday, August 5th, when Warren Buffett made that announcement. And yesterday was no different. Investors, traders, and analysts keep pushing higher and higher, all because they believe that the Fed is going to lay out the plan this Friday at the Jackson Hole Conference and then begin cutting rates uh, on September 18th. Remember, the next FOMC meeting is on September 17th and 18th, so, the, so the, the announcement will come on the 18th. The Dow yesterday gained another 235 points. The S&P up 54 points. Uh, the NASDAQ surged by 245 points. The Russell up 26 points. The Transport's up 140, and the equal-weighted S&P gained 52 points. All, while this all feel good, as long as you stayed invested, it leaves us to wonder, okay, great, but what's gonna happen when they actually do cut rates? Will we get this, are we in this buy the rumor, sell the news type of reaction? Will the same people who are forcing it higher be the first ones to lock in those recent profits by hitting the sell button once he makes the announcement? And then if that happens, will the long-term investor then get spooked, causing him or her to also feel like they need to hit the sell button before they lose everything? Every one of the 11 major groups in the S&P advanced yesterday. Tech led the way up 1.7. Consumers discretionary up one and a quarter percent, right? Think the strong consumer. Uh, communications up 1.15%, leaving industrials, utilities, energy, healthcare, and real estate all up six tenths of a percent. Financials up a half a percent. Basic materials up a half a percent, and consumer staples up a third of a percent. According to Bloomberg's group ranking returns year to date, tech is up 29%, communications up 24%, utilities up 17.8%. How's that for a boring sector? Financials up 16.7%, staples up 13%, healthcare up uh, 12%, industrials up 12%, energy up 8.5%, basic materials up 6.25%, consumer discretionary and real estate are up 5%. Further down the line, you saw home builders up 2% yesterday, airlines up 1.5%, disruptive tech up 2.3%, the growth trade, SPYG up 1.3%, Semis up 2%, metals and miners up 1%, cybersecurity up 1.3%, expanded tech software up 1.1%, uh, coal stocks up 2.7%, oil and gas exploration up 7 tenths, natural gas stocks up 3%, aerospace and defense up a half a percent. And the list goes on and on. And naturally, any of the names that bet against the markets continue to get slammed. The dog was down a half a percent. PSQ was down one and a half percent. The SH down one percent. The VIXI down two and a quarter. The triple leverage short, the SPSX lost three percent. But again, remember, none of these are long-term holdings at all. You use these very strategically when you sniff weakness. Conversely, the triple levered long, the SPXL, naturally gained nearly 3% as you would expect. Now, the volumes have been trending lower as we move into the end of the month. We talked about this. People are enjoying, uh, are away joining the waning days of summer and moves will be and are exaggerated as a result. And I think 
the recent rally is proof of just that exaggeration. But let's see. Look, the Fed is at, uh, at, is at the do or die moment, right? Markets are paying all kinds of attention to the Jackson Hole boondoggle. And not only uh, do they expect to hear that cuts are coming, in September. They also expect JJ to tell them the size and the pace of the additional expected cuts in the months thereafter, all while they keep their eyes on inflation and the unemployment uh, report. The question is, will JJ walk the line or will he become an obvious dove? Right. Yesterday I was on with Maria Bartiromo on Mornings with Maria. You can catch that uh, that interview on my Twitter at Kenny Polcari. We talked exactly about that. I think he walks the line. I do not think he becomes a dove, nor do I think he remains a hawkish. I think he's going to be exactly as he always is, methodical, right on the fence, and keenly focused. He's going to say what he says, and the market is going to hear what it wants to hear, period, the end. The risk is that if the market does not hear exactly what it wants, then watches the Momo guy suddenly do a 180 and all run for the door. Bonds yesterday held steady. The 10-year yield just up by one basis point. Uh, oil fell by 3% yesterday. The, wor uh, the word is that Benny Netanyahu has accepted a ceasefire in Gaza, although Hamas has yet to accept. And that is causing this whole supply risk issue to potentially fade. All as Chinese demand supposedly wanes. WTI fell $2.20 a barrel yesterday to end the day at $74.37. Remember yesterday morning I said, we are now once again below all three trend lines. The long-term trend line was at 76.55. A failure to take that back and hold it could see us test the June and July lows of $72 a, a barrel. Overnight, we tested as low as 73.50, inching ever closer to that $72 low. Now, the sense is that if OPEC Plus raises production in October, like they suggested a couple of months ago, then we're going to see oil collapse, something the Saudis do not want to see happen. As a result, I don't believe that OPEC is going to raise production, uh, especially since the forecasts suggest that global oil demand is going to slow in 2025, while the non-OPEC oil producers, uh, their production is going to surge. And this creates a real migraine for the crown prince. Gold continues to surge. It's up another 20 bucks this morning, trading at 25.61, all on the idea that rates are coming down, right? Lower rates will support gold. Last night was the first day of the, of the Democratic National Convention. The big event was JoJo saying uh, his goodbye speech, right? Saying goodbye to the party on his way to California now to try to raise money. Next up is Cami. We just need to know what's the plan? Does she have a plan? Because right now uh, she's planning on raising taxes and uh, imprisoning price gouges in the food industry, apparently, while leaving the border wide open. Oh, and by the way, she's also decided that she's not going to tax tips. After all, she was the deciding vote in the Senate that actually implemented that very policy to tax tips. Today's a new day, but let's see what it brings. Futures this morning are flat. Actually, they're, they're down a little bit. The, markets, the market is now open and uh, the markets are down just slightly. European markets are mixed this morning. Sweden cut their rates by 25 basis points. They're now at 3.5%, and they signaled at least two more cuts are supposedly coming. But they want to see what JJ and the Fed does. Currently, the spread between Sweden and the U.S. is 2%. They don't want it to be any wider than that. So before they move again, they have to see what the Fed's going to do. The S&P closed at 56.08, up 54 points. We're only 50 points away from the all-time high while we're in the final weeks of summer. Volumes tend to be lower, uh, resulting in more exaggerated moves in either direction. We talked about that, and that's exactly what I think is happening. Remember, you're invested, so don't worry about it. Why are you panicking? You are participating. You're not missing out on anything. And if you have more money to put to work, be patient. You're going to get your chance. For now, keep that money in a government money market fund that's paying you nearly 5%. In the end, as usual, you're going to update your shopping list, take advantage of where it makes sense uh, in your favorite names if they back off, and continue to add to some defensive positions if you really want to put money to work. Make sure you know what you own in times like this. If you're concerned, always talk to your advisor. Again, be happy to give me a call because I'm always happy to talk to you about uh, planning and investing and wealth planning and long-term investing. Anyway, okay. So what do we have for dinner tonight? So these are chicken thighs with pancetta and balsamic vinegar, right? It sounds all fancy, but really not difficult to make. For this, you're gonna need the usual suspects. You need olive oil, you need diced pancetta, you can use bacon, you need uh, eight medium-sized skinless chicken thighs, you need an onion that you're gonna dice, garlic cloves, four or five that you're gonna, you know, 
uh, diced, uh, and you need dry red wine. You need one can of diced tomatoes. You need one can of tomato paste, water. You need uh, chopped rosemary, chopped thyme. You need salt and pepper. You need red hot, uh, uh, red hot pepper chili flakes if you want. You need balsamic vinegar and chopped fresh parsley. Now, in a large, heavy skillet, you're going to heat the oil over medium heat and cook the pancetta until it's all cooked through and lightly browned. Going to take you five minutes. Remove the pancetta to the plate, leaving the oil in there. Set that aside. Brown the thighs now in that same oil on all sides. Uh, it takes you about 10 minutes. Remove the chicken to the plate. Cook the onions until translucent and soft, stirring often. That's going to take you five to eight minutes. You're using all the same frying pan, right? Now you're going to add the garlic. Saute that for three minutes or so. You're going to add uh, about a half a cup of the red wine. Uh, increase the heat to medium high and cook it just until the wine is reduced by about half. Now add the tomatoes, uh, the tomato paste. I would use, you know, a tablespoon of tomato paste. Uh, you want water, rosemary, thyme, salt and pepper, red pepper flakes if you're using them. Bring it to a boil, then reduce it to simmer, and then return the chicken and the pancetta to the pot. Cover the pot, let it simmer for 20 to 25 minutes until the sauce is thickened nicely, right? Adding additional water if the sauce thickens too much, so keep your eyes on it. Taste the sauce, adjust the salt and pepper as needed. Uh, now stir in one tablespoon, this is at the end, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Mix it well and then place the chicken on the platter and serve it family style. Top it with the sauce and then sprinkle it with chopped fresh parsley and serve this, you know, like I said, family style, large mixed green salad is probably all you need. You could do roasted potatoes on the side if you want uh, because you got the salad as something green. You know, you're gonna fill that salad with red onions and scallions and cucumbers uh, and dress it uh, really any way you want. I would dress it with fresh lemon juice and olive oil, uh, a little salt and pepper, and oregano. But that's me. You do you. Uh, until tomorrow, I am Kenny Polkari. Take good care.